welcome everyone in this NPTEL online certification course on biological process design for wastewater treatment. So, in the last few lectures we started studying the wastewater treatment in detail. Uh, in the last uh, two lectures uh, we have studied uh, sedimentation, flocculation, coagulation in detail. Before that we studied regarding the flow equalization and aeration. So, till now we have concentrated mostly on physico chemical method of treatment. So, today we are going to start with the biological wastewater treatment sections. We will start with general standing of that what are the objectives of biological treatment. So, the basic idea of biological treatment is to oxidize the dissolved and the particulate biodegradable constituents which are present in the wastewater into non-polluting end products. That means, converting them into CO2, H2O, etcetera. Also, it is desired to remove or transform nutrients such as nitrogen and phosphorus during the biological treatment. Also, it is desired to capture non settleable and suspended solids into a biofilm and to remove the specific trace organic compounds which are present in the wastewater. So, there are multiple facets of biological treatment. The main objective is to oxidize the dissolved and particulate biodegradable constituents into CO2, H2O, etcetera. So, this is the main objective of biological treatment. Now, there are different classification of the biological treatment processes. So, according to microbial maintenance in the system, there may be suspended growth processes, there may be attached growth processes. So, suspended growth processes, here the microorganisms are maintained as a suspension in the reactor by appropriate mixing methods. So, examples include activated sludge systems, oxidation ditches, aerated lagoons etcetera. So, we are going to learn the lagoon today in greater detail also. Further the attached growth are fixed film processes. In this case the microorganism in the reactor remains attached to some inert packing material or medium and these type of treatment processes are examples include the trickling filter, the rotating biological contactor etcetera. So, according to how the microbes are maintained inside the system, the overall the systems may be classified as suspended or attached growth. Now, according to operational conditions, whether oxygen is supplied or not, so the processes may be classified as aerobic, anaerobic, facultative, etcetera. In the aerobic process, actually they require the presence of molecular oxygen for maintaining the metabolic activity of microorganism. Aerobes use molecular or free oxygen to assimilate organic impurities that is convert them into carbon dioxide, water and biomass. The source of oxygen in the reactor can be natural example in the trickling filter and in the aerobic stabilization ponds or artificial where oxygen is supplied from outside example in the activated sludge process aerated lagoons etcetera. And these aerobic processes they fail in the absence of oxygen. Then we have anaerobic process. This process operates in the absence of molecular oxygen in the reactor for the growth of microbes. Anaerobes assimilate the organic impurities and the final products of organic assimilation in the anaerobic treatment are like methane, carbon dioxide, gas, biomass etcetera. The examples of anaerobic treatment include anaerobic sludge digesters, anaerobic upflow filters, etcetera, USB reactors, etcetera. Now, the difference in the mechanism of aerobic and anaerobic processes is given here. In the case of aerobes, the organic contaminants in the presence of oxygen and nutrients are converted into carbon dioxide water and these aerobes also generate excess cell mass. In the case of anaerobic bacteria, the organic contaminants in the presence of nutrients are converted into methane and carbon dioxide and certainly some amount of excess cell mass is again generated. So, this is the difference. 
Then we have the third method which is called facultative process. This process operates both in the presence and in the absence of molecular oxygen in the reactor for the growth of facultative bacteria. Examples include facultative stabilization pond. So, where no oxygen is supplied, if oxygen is available, ok. If it is not available, then also the system will operate. Then we have anoxic process. In this biological process, the microbes convert the nitrate nitrogen of wastewater into nitrogen gas in the absence of oxygen and this process is known as denitrification. So, this is anoxic process. The comparison between aerobic and anaerobic process is given here. In the aerobic process, the advantage is that 50 percent of the carbon is converted into carbon dioxide and rest is converted into biomass. In the case of anaerobic, 94 percent of the carbon is converted into biogas and rest is converted into biomass. So, here biogas may contain majority of methane, but certainly carbon dioxide etcetera also. Now, in the aerobic case, the 60 percent of the energy is stored in the biomass and rest is removed as process heat, whereas in the anaerobic case, 90 percent of the energy is retained as the biogas and rest 3 to 5 percent is wasted as heat and rest is converted into biomass. Then for aerobic case, we require high energy input for aeration, which is actually a disadvantage and also nutrient addition is requirement and the process may require large surface area. For anaerobic case, there is no external energy input is required because methane is formed and there is low nutrient requirement also as compared to aerobic case. The process area requirement is also less. The disadvantage is that with respect to anaerobic cases that large startup time is required and the wastewater which has to be treated should contain very high amount of carbon otherwise anaerobic process may not work and so that is why lot of research is still in process. For aerobic case a small startup time is required which is the benefits and the technology is well established so, this is there. Now, we will study one of the first uh, biological treatment method which is used very commonly and which is called as lagoon. So, there could be different types of lagoon, aerated lagoon, uh, non aerated one, anaerobic one, facultative one etcetera. So, aerated lagoon uh, we will try to or lagoon in general we will try to learn regarding this. So, it consists of an earthen basin in which the wastewater is fed only after screening as a grid chamber and the primary settling tanks are generally not provided. So, that means we have a pond or a lagoon in which a water is fed after only screening and this type of systems are most commonly used in the small industries. Wastewater is treated with or without sludge recycling. So, this is possible required oxygen is supplied by surface aerators or submerged diffused aeration system. It is possible that no oxygen may also be given, but for aerated lagoon this required oxygen has to be supplied. Based upon the solid handling process and degree of mixing, aerated lagoons can be classified as aerobic, facultative, extended aeration systems etcetera. This is there. Now, the key features of aerated lagoon treatment systems are that they have very large detention time which is not good in fact because the larger detention time means that larger area will be required. Since aerated lagoons do not have sludge recycling, the solid detention time is approximately equal to the liquid detention time itself. Typical SRTs of 5 days for heterotropic BOD removal or 25 days for nitrification requires liquid retention times in the order of 5 to 25 days respectively. A consequence of large detention time is a small volumetric loading often less than 0.1 kg BOD5 per meter cube per day. So, because we have large detention time the volumetric loading is smaller. Then we have a shallow depth that means the depth is small and a large plan view surface area is more. So, there this is the 
the typical depths of aerated lagoon range from 1 to 3 meter they relatively shallow depths maximize the ratio of maximum plant surface area to liquid volume most aerated lagoons use high speed surface aerators it provides high surface area with low capital cost of high speed surface aerators and flexibility in locating the surface aerator to maintain the good solid mixing so this is uh, like aerated lagoon which is actually you can see is this length is very huge okay and the, uh, this dimensions are huge and their area is very huge and these aerators may be used for providing the mixing as well as the oxygen required for this and these aerators actually float on the surface of the bumps so this is there you can see the bumps so they are like they will float on the surface you can see here some of the aerators which may be there also this is the plan and section view of typically mechanically aerated lagoon so you can see the floating aerators one is here one is kept here one is kept here two more so he, we have inlet chamber after the screening water will come and after large detention time of treatment the water will go out from here so the overall the system may look like this below this we may have a sludge zone where the sludge is getting settled so this is there now in the facultative lagoons the design is similar to the aerobic system except that the both aerobic and anaerobic conditions prevail in the lagoon and it is normally designed at low f by m food to microorganism ratio the power supply is just sufficient to supply the required oxygen and therefore all the solids in the effluent do not remain suspended the particulate solids are degraded aerobically while settled solids are decomposed anaerobically so that means the particles which are at the top which are not being settled they are actually aerobic degradation happens whereas the particles which are bigger which actually settle down very quickly to the bottom they decompose anaerobically at the bottom of the tank so both the uh, systems are operating uh, simultaneously then there are aerobic lagoons with solids recycling the aerobic lagoon with solids recycling is the same as an extended aerated activated sludge process but an earthen typically lined basin is used in place of reinforced concrete reactor basin it is necessary that the aeration requirement for an aerobic lagoon with recycling must be higher than the values for an aerobic flow through lagoon to maintain the solids in the suspension so here the requirement of aeration is more the solids kept in the suspension are not allowed to pass out with the effluent but are separated in the secondary clarifier and part of which is recirculated to the aeration tank itself so it may be looking like this it is similar to activated sludge system only thing is that we have a settling secondary settling which is happening and then the solids which are coming out part of the solids are recycled back into the system and others are wasted so this is the typical aerated lagoon with extended aeration system so here the aeration will be more as compared to a pass through aerated lagoon now what are the design considerations in the lagoon the desired quality of effluent based upon the concentration of solids to be maintained in the effluent so this is very important factor the what is the quality of effluent which is desired based upon this we have to see that what amount of solids have to be maintained in the basin and in the effluent desired efficiency of substrate conversion what is the efficiency of conversion we desire Uh, what is the bod and cod removal what is the quantity of oxygen which has to be supplied this has also to be determined then once this is known then we have to know that power that will be needed for mixing and supply of oxygen so this power has to be calculated effect of temperature if temperature variations are high between summer and winter operating conditions it is possible that the lagoon is in a place where the difference in the temperature between summer and winter season is very high so the effect of temperature has also to be 
considered. Now, design criteria detention time. Suspended growth aerated lagoons are designed on the basis of hydraulic retention time and the mean cell residence time or solid retention time SRT. So, they are dependent upon HRT and SRT. The design value of HRT and SRT for suspended growth aerated lagoon varies from 3 to 6 days and for facultative aerated lagoon HRT and SRT vary from 4 to 10 days. So, for aerated lagoon it is lesser, for facultative aerated lagoon it is much higher. Now, the power requirement, the power requirement for mixing the content of facultative aerated lagoons generally varies from 0.8 to 1 kilowatt per 10 raise to 3 meter cube of basin volume, normally about 1 kilowatt per 1000 meter cube. The energy required to keep the biosolids in the suspension is about 1.5 to 1.75 kilowatt per 10 raise to 3 meter cube. The energy required to maintain all the solids in the suspension is about 15 to 18 kilowatt per 1000 meter cube. So, the energy requirements are different depending upon the whether we want to keep only biosolids in the suspension or we want to keep all the solids in the suspension. So, it will depend upon that and the power requirement for mixing is also varies depending upon whether we have aerated lagoon or facultative lagoon. For the design of aerated system the following are normally assumed. The oxygen content is assumed to be around 23.2 percent or so. The diffuser efficiency is 30 to 50 percent. The field oxygen transfer efficiency is around 50 percent. Air weight density is around 1.2 kg per meter cube for aerobic reactors. The criteria normally adopted in designing the aerated lagoons are that the mean cell residence time theta c is 3 to 6 days already discussed without recycle for domestic wastewater and with recycle for domestic wastewater it is 10 to 30 days. Oxygen requirement is between 0.7 to 1.4 per into the amount of BOD removed in kg per day. So, it will we can take tentatively around 1 value. So, then the solid concentration in the lagoon have to be maintained depending upon the type of operation. For aerobic flow through type system it is 30 to 300, for facultative it is in the range of 30 to 150 milligram per liter, whereas for extended aeration system it is much much higher 4000 to 5000 milligram per liter. The HRT values are between 2 to 10 days for aerobic flow through system, 3 to 20 days for facultative type and 0.7 to 2 days for extended aeration system. The depth may vary from 2 to 5 meter. The power requirement for oxygen supply may vary from 1 to 8 horse power per 1000 meter cube basin volume and the oxygen transfer capacity for surface aerator is around 2 kg oxygen per kilowatt hour at the standard condition. Uh, these are the typical values which are assumed in the lagoon design. Now, we can uh, do some modeling and understand the design of lagoons by simple equations. So, if we suppose there is a aerobic, so this is a lagoon and in here in this zone the aerobic treatment will happen and because the oxygen may not be available in this zone, so here anaerobic treatment and in the sludge zone also anaerobic treatment may happen. So, this is the typical lagoon. Now, we have the lagoon which is having a flow rate of water at Q and the initial concentration of solids is S0 and after treatment the flow rate remains the same and the solid this the concentration of the organic comes down to S. So, applying mass balance in the lagoon, so BOD in will be equal to BOD out plus BOD consumed. Now, the BOD actually in is Q into S0. So, S0 is the initial concentration in terms of BOD, then the BOD out is Q into S and we are assuming that the rate of consumption of BOD is given by first order reaction rate constant 
k which is reaction rate coefficient it is the term. So, this is V into k s, s is the concentration inside the reactor and V is the volume. Now, if we actually use this equation we can easily formulate this formula which is given here. So, s by s 0 is equal to 1 upon 1 plus k V by q where V by q can be considered as theta which is the hydraulic detention time and S by S0 is the fraction of soluble BOD remaining after the treatment. So, and V is the reactor volume, Q is the flow rate. So, this is the simple equation we can find out for the lagoon and if several reactors suppose one lagoon is followed by second lagoon etcetera. If several reactors are arranged in series the effluent of one pond becomes the influent to the next and a substrate balance written across the series of n reactor results in the following formula. The S n upon S 0 is equal to 1 upon 1 plus k V by q raised to n, where n is the number of reactors in series. A wide range of values of k are available in the literature. So, we should know the value of k. Although many variables relating to both the reactor and wastewater affect the value of k, the water temperature affects it most significantly. So, k value at any other temperature can be found out using this formula if k at 20 is known. So, k reaction rate constant at 20 degree centigrade it may range from 0.2 to 1 and theta is the temperature coefficient which its value may also vary in the range of 1.03 to 1.12. So, this is there. So, this formula can be used for reactors or lagoons in series. Now, we will try to solve one problem before ending today's lecture. So, a wastewater flow from a small community averages around 3400 meter cube per day during the winter whereas, it is 6600 meter cube per day during the summer. So, this, there is lot of variation in the community with respect to waste water generation per day. The average temperature of the coldest month is 10 degree centigrade whereas, the average temperature of the warmest month is 30 degree centigrade. The average BOD 5 is 200 milligram per liter with 70 percent being soluble and the reaction coefficient k is given to be 0.323 per day at 20 degree centigrade. The value of temperature coefficient is given to be 1.06. Now, we have to prepare a preliminary design of a facultative plant treatment system for the community to review 90 percent of the soluble VOD find the volume of the facultative lagoon to remove 90 percent of the soluble VOD, find the dimension of the three square lagoons in series with depth 1.5 meter if we are using them. The two problems are given. Now, we will go ahead and solve for both the conditions summer as well as winter and in both the cases the average VOD is same around 200 milligram per liter with 70 percent soluble BOD. Now, estimation of rate constant because the k value he is given here is at 20 degree centigrade and it is 0.23 per day. So, this is given in the question the 0.23 per day at 20 degree centigrade. So, we try to find out uh, the k value at different conditions. So, this is k at 30 degree centigrade is 0 0.23, 1.06, 30 minus 20 this is there and at in the winter season because the temperature is 10, so 10 minus 20 is so 0.128 per day. So, this condition there. Then estimation of volume of lagoon, if in the first case, so the formula which is used for single lagoon is this. Now, we put all the values. So, 90 percent have to be removed. Remember, we have to remove the 90 percent of the soluble. So, we are assuming that 20 by 200 or 0.9 we can assume this. So, under this condition, 
this is the formula so k value is already known for summer condition 0.411 and 6600 is the flow rate whereas 3400 is the flow rate in the during the winter season where the k value is 0.128 so in the both the conditions the volume is coming out 144 525 whereas 239062 so that means the volume which is required in the winter season for treatment is much much higher as compared to during the summer season now if suppose we are going to use three volumes in series so we have one reactor two reactor and three reactor and we want to remove the 90 percent of the soluble residue now the equation for this case will become sn by s0 this is that means s3 by s0 is equal to 1 upon 1 plus k vi vi means the volume of each and by n into q so this is there so if you solve so it is coming out vi is equal to 55607 for summer season and 91980 for winter season so again we have more volume which is required for treatment during winter season this is how we can design the reactors based upon the data available for lagoon for a simple community like a village community or a very small community in any of the town and thus we can uh, foresee that how much amount of lagoon area or volume will be required so depending upon the depth we can assume the initial conditions and then just we can treat the water which is generated in the community so we are going thank you very much we will learn the activated sludge system in detail in the next lecture thank you very much